guys. Um, so today I wanted to talk about uh, toxic people and relationships um, and even just people that aren't suitable for you. Um, so when we, when we think about people who are toxic, what are the, the main things that come up? I mean, I know people are like, oh, violence, you know, um, someone who's toxic would be violent or um, openly manipulative. Um, or, um, you know, they would, they would have some, some clear signs that they're a toxic person. Um, so how do we pick that up? How do we pick up those, those apparent clear signs? <laughs> because they're not always clear. Um, you know, sometimes you, you meet someone and they just talk about themselves a lot. Um, and they're not really overly concerned about you or your boundaries or when you say, Look, I've got to go to bed, and they don't leave. Um, so that's really important to kind of look at as well. Um, are toxic people only people who are clearly toxic? Are they people who are um, crossing, you know, those those physical kind of boundaries there? You know, they're making you feel unsafe. They're making you feel like you have to defend yourself all the time. Or are they people who are doing little things, you know, that... <clears throat> I mean, made up over time, are, are causing quite quite an impact to your life. And because your tolerance is so high, you know, if you've had a traumatic life, your tolerance is often higher. So your tolerance um, is about what you've experienced. So it's it's your it's your life experience that allows you to um, pick up whether something is okay for you and where your limits are. And usually, people with um, a higher tolerance either minimise things. Um, to when they're hearing other people's stories, they're like, oh, you know what, I've been through worse. Or they maximize things. So, um, you know, they catastrophize situations. Oh my gosh, she's probably been this, through the same thing that I have. Um, you know, so so it's, it's always a good thing to look at the reality of the situation by being logical. Um, our emotions can lie to us. So when we're meeting new people, especially new people, because new people can really come under our radar because, um, you know, in the first year is when you have the most exciting kind of conversations and emotions and all of those things flying around um, because you don't, you, you don't know much about that person and it's exciting and you want to try and um, learn things. Um, from from people that you meet in, in your life as well. Um, so something that I've found is a bit of a clear indicator um, of someone who is potentially not right for your life um, is the, the questions that they ask. So look at the questions that they ask. So if they're asking questions like, um, do you like exercise? Um, it usually comes from a place um, of of themselves so so they're, they're saying things that relate to who they are as a person so um, they may answer in a different way because they may look at who you are and decide well I like that person and I want them to like me um, so they might try to manipulate you in a way where they are lying or um, stretching the truth or whatever it is um, because an answer has that cognitive processing so that thought process that comes along I um, you know people who have problems with attachment might try and sabotage the relationship so they might try and say nasty things or um, you know say oh well I don't really think you're suitable for me and you know those kinds of things or um, catastrophize situations where they they try to break up with you all the time or they try to end the friendship or whatever it is um, so, um, you know, it's, it's important. So you, you look at the, the questions that they answer, that's usually truthful because people ask questions um, as human beings to form a connection, to form that relatability because it's about belonging in the end. Um, as human beings, we have that basic need um, to want to, you know, be a relatable person, to want to belong a part of a group, you know. So um, when we ask questions, we're really asking um, is it just me or, or do you, do you like those things as well? It, that would be nice, you know, to, to hear that somebody else has experienced what I've experienced or likes what I experienced or, um, there are avenues that perhaps they have used to overcome what I'm still struggling with. Um, so there's always that to kind of look at. Um, now on a deeper level, you want to look at, um, disagreements. So let's just say, um, you've met a new person, um, and you take this um, 
this lady to bed, for instance, you're, you're a guy, you take this lady to bed, um, and she doesn't like certain things that you like, um, you know, and, and, uh, that, that causes a, a problem, um, so there's, you know, conflicting values and stuff like that there, um, and there, there's an argument, um, and so that's what you've got to look at, like, in anything, in a disagreement, in, you know, I'm, I'm not condoning, obviously, um, just sleeping with people, but, um, that was just a, an example, um, so, um, yeah, always, always look at, um, the way that someone reacts to, um, something that is a conflicting viewpoint, so if they, if they come across, like, well, I don't really agree with you, and, and then they, you know, get aggressive, or they try to force you to do what they like, um, you know, I, I want to go bushwalking, um, I can't believe you don't like it, you know, um, that means a lot to me, if that other person is not compromising in a, in a decent way, and trying to look for that connection, and that request, um, they're, they're kind of trying to control and, and manipulate you or force you into doing that, you know, or oh, I don't think this is going to work out if you don't like that, um, and you're not prepared to, um, do exactly as I want, as opposed to trying to meet in the middle and making a compromise, because obviously we all want the things that we like, we, we want those in our lives, um, but there are ways to go about that. Um, in a healthy way uh, so that's a, a big thing with toxic people is that they they tend to um, or even insecure people they tend to try and uh, push their their point across or the, they'll fold um, and at some point they'll come out in a passive aggressive manner because their needs haven't been met um, so that's another side of things if someone's always agreeing with you but they never actually um, coming up with things themselves like they they can't actually make up their own mind about things or um you know that that's a bit of a sign as well that that perhaps they're a bit codependent um and they might not actually have their own lives or um even want to <laughs> so you when you're looking for a healthy person you want to look for someone who is um working towards something so they have a goal or a, a dream in mind they're they're looking at kind of moving forward in their life um yeah i mean everybody has stuff we've all experienced different things and people react in different ways and maybe there's mental illness uh illness sorry or addiction or um different kinds of things that uh affect them um, currently or um, previously so we've, we've all got things in our past that maybe we're experiencing guilt or shame or um, you know triggers or trauma from I have hair in my mouth um, so that's that's a thing as well be realistic when you're looking for people friends um, partners etc um, or even trying to mend relationships um, be realistic um, because we've all got stuff, you know, <laughs> there's no perfect person out there, um, but I find when it comes to people who've experienced trauma, especially, um, they do attract people that, that really exciting kind of feeling usually comes from familiarity, and when it comes to someone who's lived a very, um, damaged kind of lifestyle, um, that familiarity usually will be attracting someone who's probably quite toxic, um, so it's always good to analyze when you're meeting new people um, what qualities and values that you want in someone and ask them different questions and find out what qualities and values they have. So be logical about it. So if you're really pulled to someone, definitely question it. Definitely question it. Um, it's always good to do that. But if you, if you have an open mind about things and you don't place expectations on things and you take things slow, don't let the other person... Um, rule the the pace of the relationship um you know when, when you look at the circle of security the circle of concern um it, it talks about um three months before you even kind of invite someone into your home um a year before you invite someone um to meet your child um I find that a really difficult thing to actually act out um I think a year is a ridiculously long time because um, you know, your child is a part of your life, um, and, 
you really want to know if that person's going to fit into your life. So I think that those um, time frames are personal to um, each person. You know, you just look at being flexible with that, but also being mindful that um, inviting someone into your your middle circle, right in the middle, where it's only supposed to be you, um, very soon is signs of... of um, yeah, porous boundaries, which is practically having no boundaries, you know, just problems with boundaries. Um, so when you're looking at um, kind of changing the relationships that you've got going on, um, you need to, to look at self-care. Um, so what are you doing for yourself? How do you think about yourself? If you're in a bad state, if you're um, depressed or, or if you're um, experiencing kind of uh, early recovery, so you're in new, new recovery, um, it's definitely a bad idea to try and look for a relationship at that point because often what we'll find is that we will attract what we are right now. And that is because if you find a high value person and, and, and they meet someone who... Um, you know, maybe is in fresh recovery. Um, that person in fresh recovery might have um, a lot of stuff still going on. They might be going through withdrawals. They might be going through mood swings, um, you know, dealing with their trauma. And they might actually relapse. I mean, it's not to say that we obviously want that to happen. There are supports out there to prevent that from happening. But it is a possibility. Um, so someone who is a high value person will be looking for someone in the same mind frame because they're looking for a growth mindset. They're looking for someone who's who's kind of sorted out their stuff, they're stable, um, they're moving forward in their life. Um, and that does not mean, like I said, that we're looking, we're, we're looking for someone perfect, people who are, you know, have their stuff figured out. They're not looking for someone perfect. They're looking for someone who, um, you know, is just, is, is moving forward, you know, is, is doing something with their lives, is um, going to meet their needs as well. Because someone who's not in a stable position will not be able to support you as well. So if you're going through a tough time, that other person um, is probably not going to be emotionally stable enough to give you the support that you need. Um, because a relationship is not always 50-50. Sometimes the other person is struggling. And if you find in that relationship that it's one-sided that you are doing most of the supporting and the other person is doing most of the taking, then that's probably an unhealthy relationship as well. Um, so it's something that needs to be addressed. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to leave that person. I would never suggest um, anybody ending a relationship um, on, on those kinds of grounds. But um, I do think that a, a conversation needs to be had. You know, it's... um. It's interesting to look at dynamics of relationships. Um, so if you were, for instance, if you were your friend and you were looking at your relationship um, or a relationship you have in your life, what advice would you give to them? Um, that, that's a good one to look down. At. And if you're, if you're feeling disrespected, Disrespected is is a is a big blanket umbrella word, and the the reason that it is is because people who are feeling disrespected, um, you know, you might find five people and they say, I don't feel like I matter, or I don't feel like this person respects me, and they might have different reasons why, <laughs> and the reason that is is because respect um, comes under a different bunch of things. You know, respect can be that person isn't showing me appreciation, um, that person's not showing me um, stability or safety, that person doesn't listen to me, um, that person, uh, you know, doesn't make me feel like any of my accomplishments mean anything. Um, so it's, it's always a really good thing to specify what the problem is and then look at how important that is to you. Um, because like I said, toxic people are not always going to, you know, um, damage your safety in a, in a way. And our, our mental stability is a part of our safety as well. So it's really important to, to look at that and, and be mindful of that. Um, any questions, I can do another video. I am just, uh, just thought I'd do a run through, a brief run through this time. Um, and I can go into gaslighting and manipulation and narcissistic traits um, in another video if you guys like. Alright, thanks.